So we are starting with verse 42 from Srivila Pakusumanjali. With even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately die down the king of elephants, Krishna, tightly. When will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of the wagtail bird with eyeliner. With even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tie down the king of elephants, Krishna, tightly. When will this person worship those two eyes that defeat the fickleness of the wagtail bird with eyeliner? Srimad yeah. Raguna Dasa Goswami attains a virtual succession of relishable devotional services to Swamini. The devotees that are fixed in Smarana will also attain these relishable services within their minds. When Smarana becomes deep, it is called Dhyana or meditation. This dhyana or nidhi dhyasana is the best means of meeting the Lord face to face. In the Patanjala darshana, it is written to fix one's mind on a single object without interruption is called dhyana or meditation. According to Sri Jiva Goswami, this refers to deep meditation or dhruvanusmriti. Sripad Shankaracharya describes this kind of deep meditation which he calls upasana as follows. In the introduction to his commentary to the Chandogya Upanishad, Upasana means to hold on to a certain object of meditation 
according to scriptural injunctions and fix the mind on it in such a way that other thoughts cannot interrupt. So upasana means to hold on to a certain object of meditation according to scriptural injunctions and fix the mind on it in such a way that other thoughts cannot interrupt. The best way for a devotee to enhance his meditation is to chant the holy name of the Lord in the company of other devotees. The more the devotee's heart gets purified by this practice of Nama Sankirtana and the goddess of devotion Bhakti Devi becomes manifest in the heart. The closer the devotee will get to the kingdom of Druvanu Smriti meditation and will be blessed by attaining spotless bliss. In this deep meditation, Sridasa Goswami serves Swamini by ornamenting her. In this verse, he perceives the Kajala Seva, the service of a blind eyeliner, praying, When can I worship these eyes? that tightly bind the Krishna elephant with even the slightest wing. When can I worship them with eyeliner? Within the prayer lies the acquaintance with the mood Swamini is always victorious over him. <clears throat> Hence, she is known as Jaya Shri. She, whose beauty consists of superiority and victory, in gambling, joking, water games, love games, and others. Radharani's superiority is evident for her playful glances are Mohana's only support. <clears throat> she need not to make any great movements with her eyes. The slightest movement is enough to tightly bind the Krishna elephant. Yeah. 
there is an abundance of her madana rasa infused in these playful glances rather now who would like to explain on this they can explain <laughs> goranga you start radhe radhe gurudev yeah. actually there is a lot of points in this text which uh, rasamayi was reading and this last point about radhika's playful glances it's very sweet very meaningful because through the glances radhika is expressing her feelings to her beloved through her glances he, she is worshiping mohan she is speaking to mohan through the glances also and her servants dasi manjari tulasi she can perfectly understand what she is speaking because she is so emotionally connected with radhika that she can see in her eyes the words of her mahabhava heart so when we read this that radhika is not making big endeavor to tightly very tightly bound krishna we can see the power and the position of the radha because it's only slightest blink of her eyes if en is enough to bind the krishna and we can remember also the lila when yashoda was trying to bind the krishna and she has to put great endeavor for that he was very naughty he was running around this table or what mortar she was sweating but she couldn't do but when radhika shot her slightest glance like a arrow krishna made immediately was stunned without any endeavor the arrow flower arrow of mahabhava was completely sufficient to bind the krishna and even to put him in the situation where he fainted sometimes so we can see also in this explanations of which baba gave here also that this pushpa banaya which is present in kama gayatri mantra pushpa flowers arrows which radhika from manjari point of view radhika is shooting directly to the krishna and all his senses 
is something which extremely to the utmost gives Krishna pleasure. But also to those who witness this intimate lila radicus manjaris. So through the meditation of Kamagachi Mantra and Gurudev can explain a little bit more later. We can get this glimpse how Radhika's glances, beautiful restless eyes are always eager to express her deep feelings. When Tulasi is speaking these words, she said with even the slightest blink from the corners of your eyes, you immediately tied down the king of elephants very tightly. So this is the words of King Kari who understands the mood of Radhika and King Kari is also making slight jokings by saying I'm very proud on you very very proud because with just slight blink you can tight the king of elephants, Krishna. It is a little bit exaggeration because of jokes, which shows very close intimacy. And those devotees who are able to go deep in the bhajan by the mercy, causeless mercy, they can catch these moods, these feelings in the words of Acharyas and they can relish it because all these words are like mantras and these words are actually also the arrows, flowery arrows of Mahajan's words. which they shoot it in the hearts of Sadakaya. Uh, yeah. 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 I will stop now. Maybe someone else. Please, Gurudev. Stop it now. Yes, Gurudev. Yes, uh, what to say, like, Thank you, Goranga Sundar, for leading us very beautifully into the Kam Gayatri, the Pushpa Banaya Mantra. And I think um, these days, somehow we all are meditating more deeply about this meaning of the Kam Gayatri, since uh, Gurudev has really shown us the beauty of Radharani's love for Mohan. And I'm always very much mesmerized and stunned how this king of kings, the king of the universe, is trembling, is shaking, is fainting. And sometimes they find him in a kunja or in the Dira Samira garden, and he's unconscious. Because either he got the sidelong glance of our Swamini, or she left him in man so i was thinking like god is really beautiful because he's so surrendered to love and mostly he surrendered to that goddess of love who has this madana kya mahabhav and what beautiful role we have as dasis as manjaris to serve our swamini in this playful 
Leela with with Mohan that nothing can revive him and um, we were reading the other day this very beautiful um, verse in Radha Rasa Sudhanidi where um, when Radharani leaves the Rasa dance out of pride but also out of jealousy, out of man and Mohan realizes that she's gone he's starting to look for her he's starting to look for her trying to smell her where she went and he's walking and like a mad elephant he's walking and trembling and fainting and he's only what he can say is radhe radhe but he's not able to find her because she's hiding somewhere and in that moment what happens is that he faints you know the supreme personality of godhead has fainted he's defeated and this is also when we chant the uh, Kam Gayatri, it's, I feel a very beautiful meditation. It, it's Radha's Mohan who is defeated and who is fainted because of the Pushpa Banaya, the arrows of millions of arrows of Cupid have hit him in the separation of Radharani and the longing. So then it's uh, in this uh, verse, Sripat in his Kinkari form goes to and finds him in the Dira Samira garden totally unconscious as we also read his flute next to him his peacock feather down his disheveled his clothes and cannot wake him up and don't know what to do even uh, the kinkari are stunned you know how unconscious he is how much he is in love with swamini so they run to swamini and tell her that swamini you know this boy is totally gone only you can revive him. So please, please leave your man. You know, come, come to meet him and bring him back to life. Swamini agrees and she goes into the garden where our supreme personality of God, has, our Mohan is lying there, totally fainting. And then it's written that she revives him with his with her ecstatic trans with her transcendental ecstatic bodily compassion so mohan opens his eyes and sees her and the kinkaris already have arranged for a nice kunja and they bring them both in on the bed where they have put some flowers lotus flowers and they place them there so I just feel like we're very blessed that um, to the mercy of Gurudev and also our Acharyas that we can really dive into the meaning of Pushpa Banaya. And so, yeah, just very thank you for choosing this beautiful verse, Radha Rani. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to add. Everything is so beautiful. So beautiful words and uh, beautiful realizations. And I just want to say something in general. Uh, the big illusion in this world is that we think that people think what they are seeing and what 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 they can touch and what uh, in this with this satak there with this body that is reality but actually it's all an illusion and uh, uh, in one song in one poem now i can see now i can see my real identity now I can feel love and harmony. And this is actually our real identity is this, what we were just talking about, what we were just experience. This, this Anubhav of everybody who is joining, who can feel experience, realize this, that is the most closest to our real identity. 
it has nothing to do anymore with this world where we are in right now. We have, we have uh, so many distractions here in this material environment and in earth, water, fire, either air, all this different construction of the material nature is actually what binds us like yesterday we were reading the ropes, the ropes which is binding to that material existence, these are the gunas. So that what takes us out of these gunas is this. Listen to this, what all these beautiful words we were hearing that tracks us out of the gunas and brings us to that, to our real identity. Our real identity which is Love and harmony. There's no quarrels. There's no, no, no uh, negativity. You can say it's all positive, and that's why we, it's so beautiful to to listen to this. And when I, when we hear that, the wagtail, he has eyes like a wagtail bird. What is a wagtail bird? A wagtail bird. The characteristic of vector bird, the biological explanation is that it always searches. So when the, when the eyes are uh, flickering, when she's looking here and there, what is, she, what is she searching? First of all, emanates a blue effulgence out of, out of her vision, out of her eyes, and everything turns blue. Everything, what, she was, what she's looking at. And that what she is searching is her moha. And there is one thing when that when Mohan understands really who is Radha, he wants to become the subject. He wants to become the subject. He doesn't want to be anymore the object. He wants to be the subject, and then Radharani is the object. And then when they both are admiring the manjaris, the kinkaris, then both become subject and the kinkaris are the object. And that is actually what is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu giving kinkari bath. This is what this is what it's all about. And because this is so extremely Secret, Mahaprabhu opens it for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu is giving out this in his Audarya Lila, in his generosity for everybody, is it? Not for only some certain categories of people, no, for everybody. And this is the causeless mercy for the universe. This is Mahaprabhu, that's the causeless mercy for the universe. And this is all these pay, play times coming in. They actually, they are, that's by the mercy of Mahaprabhu that we can listen to this. And to listen to this means, even if you speak, you listen. And to listen means listen with the heart, not with the ears. Not with the mundane years, with the heart. And then automatically, love will awaken. Radharani awakens, she awakens us from inside because that is natural. It is a natural um, fact that the love is in everybody's heart. All living entities have that love in the heart. And by listening and by hearing all these beautiful words, automatically that love awakens and there is no other source necessary to look for. Only hearing and only chanting. That's it. And then we are connected with all our hearts. Radhe Radhe. One thing, more, yeah. one thing more. Could there I speak more? Could I have... That is 
how the manjari should practice also is there and that is the step is asmaranam dhyanam so this has to explain and gora chandra will explain you about <laughs> take the books step by step you have to explain <laughs> what to explain with it how to start from the smaran when we go in the smaran then how i got the dhyan dharan smaranam oh, yeah so i have to say oh, how this is the process in our sit that they have to go on if this is not a practice we cannot get it ourselves this is up to that pain and it is i think i cannot properly explain what you what you know do is what it is start so gurudev you want me to explain our practice how we doing our sarana so what i understand in this book it means in this 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 chapter 42 so i'm reading no you are explain reading that everyone can be what your realization and practice explain that you do three time explain to Yeah. No, really, no. For them, one by one point. <laughs> the devotees that are fixed in smaran mm. will also attain these relishable services within their minds. That's the point. Yeah. If the devotees are not fixed in asmaran, not well. <laughs> That I want to say, yeah. and he will explain very nicely. Open all everyone to see the face. <laughs> What to explain? What you cannot explain, I will say that. What you will miss, if you not miss, I am not wrong. When smaran becomes deep, it is called jnan or yeah. meditation. Understand? So take yourself. How you will get your sarup? when you will not watch yourself you cannot develop it <laughs> you watch that you are in this asmarana not it coming your is to be your meditation or not other things are coming that is what the Order is also said that smaran means mental association. Mental association. Mental association means mind is where that association brings to your thinking. Mm-hmm. What you associate, mind is associating in some a. It will end. All the mind will go there. Mind associates associating a, b, c, d. it will go for the place it is in a only 
or it goes many places. This is mental association. Ashmaram. What your association, what is your time giving, that this mind will sure go. I took all the to be together with like-minded people. Yeah. That is like me. Yeah. This dhyan or needy dhyasana is the best means of meeting the Lord face to face. Oh, oh. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And smaran become dhyana. Your mental association will become dhyana. No? What is dhyana? Where your association do, it will become one point there. Dhyana. Want to move from there, it's not moving again, come there. It become like a laser. Laser. La mind become like laser. I explain. Say that it does. Yeah. I would say in our normal state of mind, uh, the mind is going everywhere, different places, very difficult to focus. When we start our spiritual practice, we try to remember what we are listening, what we are reading in the lectures. We try to remember that and to uh, visualize in our mind the Leela, what we are reading and add our feelings and our desires to be there. And when this becomes more condensed and more thick, then in the future, one day, there will be such a strong absorption that no other thoughts enter the mind and that you are absorbed in that flow of the Leela. And I think that it's not only practice or sadhana, it's, it's a worship. No? And Radharani and Mohan, they feel attracted by that. This is the real sadhana. Sadhana. Other will not know, but your sadhana is going on. Sri Ram. In the world, there is, is, yeah. There is, I just wanted to share a small thing about one devotee from Croatia. Her name is Haripriya Helga in Radha Darshan. And she, every day, she's looking dar at the Darshan of Radha Mohan. And then she's sending a photo of something that reminds her on Radha Mohan. It's a flower or is a pattern, or is something other. So I felt this is Smaranam. Yeah. Mm. Smaranam for flower, not for um, the goal. And in fixing the mind in the goal. Not to deviate from the goal. It's good to do that, but the goal has to be fixed. Then, Dhuva uh, is Dhuva Smriti Dukkha. Go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe Helga, Haripriya, she speak about open eye meditation. Huh? We have this two kind of meditation where we 
close eyes meditation inside and external in our activities we also continue with smarana and then some object come in our mind that remind us also on radha mohan maybe that she is doing mm. yeah. giving the picture all right maybe that can so i want to make one point is yes. yeah i wanted to say that in the <laughs> sloka it is said when will i worship this two eyes by putting the kajal it's a worship what we are doing every decoration that is put to radharani is to admire this to worship that it's not dry service and decoration without feelings is worship so that worship and feelings of course attracts radha and mohan and therefore this kind of jnana meditation absorption is the best mean to have the face to face meeting with them they will appear because they also feel attracted by our worship i think yeah. so yeah. This dhyan or nidhi dhyasana is the best means of meeting the Lord face to face. In the Patanjala Darshan, it is written to fix one's mind on a single object without interruption. is called dhyana or meditation <clears throat> according to sri jiva goswami this refers to deep meditation or dhruva anusmriti sri pa chanka chaya describes this kind of deep meditation which he calls upasana as follows in the introduction to his commentary on the chandogya upanishad upasana means to hold on to a certain object of meditation according to scriptural injunctions and fix the mind on it in such a way that other thoughts cannot interrupt the best way for a devotee to enhance oh. the best way for a devotee to enhance his meditation is to chant the holy name of the lord yeah and that that in the company of other devotees yeah. radhe radhe gurudev it's written the best way is to enhance his meditation is to chant the holy name of the lord in the company of other devotees devotees not in the company of gyanis yogis karmis but real devotees who yeah. has strong established relationship with ishtadev yeah. oh. uh, yeah. Yeah. And, right. yeah many times as this karmian gyan 
and your so we have to care for that's the warning which Prabhupada also stressed Prabhupada is the good yeah Gurudev, I'm sorry that I interrupt you, but I will go back in this word interruption in meditation. Yes. Because I was listening from you a few years ago. I was in the room, small room, and you were talking with other devotees, with some devotee, and you very nicely explained actually that mind can be fixed in single object without interruption only if there's strong attachment to Radhika without feelings attachment it's not possible and this is automatically without austerities without any <coughs> materialistic endeavor it's going on smooth life becomes smooth yeah and you explained also that this sword <laughs> like you said sword is possible on the stage of Ashakti. When this connection, attachment to Radharani or other Ishtadev is deeply established in the heart of devotee. Without attachment, there is no meditation. There is Smarana up and down, up and down, but we, without attachments in the heart, chittamrit, like you say, there is no meditation, deep meditation is not possible. And then you said, I just remember really very clearly, and you please, Gurudev, correct me. Then another stage is Anusmrit or Turya. When Ishtadev is answering through the reflections of Spurtis. But yeah. I will not I will not speak like about this. No. Beautiful. No, Gurudev, thank you. I was very fortunate that I was listening this explanation, which really penetrates deeply in my heart. This is the importance of Ruchi, first Ruchi, which is in the beginning shaky, it's not concentrate, but with proper association of Sadhu Sangha and devotees in the same mood, this Ruchi is coming more solid and solid and is transforming in strong attachment. Ashakti. Ashakti Gurudev. Yes. Thank you. Then ba this is the place where Baba, the race of Baba can enter in the heart. Yeah. Radha Radha. Good now. Good now. Go on. Yeah. I think this is a natural experience everybody make also in this world with material objects. If you are attached to something very strongly, then you don't need to force yourself to think about that and to find a way to come close to the object of your desires. So 
without attachment, the mind find 100 other objects where he wants to go. <laughs> but if you are attached to something, then it's no problem for the mind to stick there all the time. So, yeah, even in material life, we have an experience of that. <clears throat> I have one question, Gurudev. Here it is said to fix the mind on a single object. So, is, is there a difference between fixing the object, for example, the lotus feet of Radharani, or to do Leela Smarana? Because Leela Smarana is the flow of the Leela, no? different situations appear or to fix in one point meditation like lotus feet or navel or eyes. What we should in start mind, with. In the one pointed in four. And as per your receive the service, the spiritual service, you are there in that service. Somebody has a Charan Seva, he is in the service of Lotus feet. And now she is walking and moving, then who has to care? Who has a service of this? So major service is there, but is not that he has no responsibility of other service. But the major service, I will, 100% will be, mind will keep there. Then other service is coming, and that service is also, I am ready to do. So, where she is, that service is my major service. With circumstances, she is there. Uh, my major service is there, and other service I'm ready for that. <laughs> no? Yeah. So, when we have our major service, which we got from Guru Mandri, but then you also said that wherever she is, we also are in service. But how do we know what is our service? Like Guru Mantra is telling us in that moment, or it comes to us? Like, Automatic. Our Guru Mantra <laughs> is the Darcy of Radharani. And she is very connected with Radhika. So Guru Mantra is what? She is inspiring in my uh, as a, uh, in a, in, inside to me yeah. in a form of Chaitanya Guru, mm -hmm. in form of that time to me, she is navigating us. Mm -hmm. Why we have to bother? What she is saving to? We are student. So that way, and see the Dasi of Radhika, what Dasis can do without the art, without the order of his boss. So he's all the telepathy is reconnected. And I have to be to feel it that. We have to enlighten, we open conscious to feel it in our sarupa. So, Sometimes a spurti comes to it, and then we should feel that this is coming from Guru Manjari, that she is guiding us in that moment what to do. Like, yeah. So we should never think we are alone there, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Rati Mandiri 
his teaching means the universal Nitai, the Guru Mantra. Why we Rati Manjari is always with us? Because this is the universal Manjari who, who takes the form of Guru Manjari. For every living individual soul, for the Manjaris. Yeah. So that practice makes us to develop our Manjari self. <coughs> Why I said to read? This is the process to be a Radha's injury, to understand her wife. How she is the one pointed and how she has bind the Krishna. Thing of a different by her side glance. Because she is one point there, and she is like this, and this words, she and that's why we say Mangali has to practice in the same way to become Mangali to understand Radha without becoming real Mangali, real Kingali of Radhika. How I can I can serve to Radhika. So we have to check what point is missing to develop it. Right? See? The more the devotee's heart gets purified by this practice of Nam Sankirtan and the goddess of devotion Bhakti Devi becomes manifest in the heart, the closer the devotee will get to the kingdom of Dhruvanu Smriti meditation. What is the one is what the Gaura Chandra? Deep meditation. Deep meditation is a deeper condensed meditation than Smaran. It's a almost completely absorption in the beloved and the object of the love. Dhruva is a one very great devotee. Ah, star. Uh, and there is one star. Uh, if you open, and every day you can see the same place, same same place. place. He is not moving. So Dhruva and Smriti oh, is yeah. the, the, the your salup you fix like this, that you are not moving from that. Mm. That is the meaning of Dhruva. Everything can change, but you are not changing. In from that point, any even you have to go to crucifixion, yes. but you are not changing from your true Everything yeah. can collapse, but collapse. So I'm not changing myself. Mm -hmm. This is when you say we have to fix ourselves. Yes. <laughs> That's the beauty of that. Yeah. Your bhav, a thai bhav, is identification. That's a Prabhupada, Sarup and Sarup Siddhi. Sarup Siddhi. Sarup means my identification and perfection of that Sarup 
is my siddhi, that has to do siddhi. That siddhi is not is a, a type of siddhi. This is the reality of my life. Perfection. To be fixed there 24 7 like the Dhruva, mm. the star that never. And that is the sadhana. If I am not fixed myself, how to come back? How to come back? How to come back? And for that, chanting is helpful. Reason of chanting. If you chant without reason, you will not develop fear. There is a reason of chanting. <laughs> the world smith is the reason of chanting. I'm escaping, I want to be one way pointed. He is a greedy. His reverse mercy is not happening, but he is greedy for that. And one is not greedy. Means he has no desire, greedy. And Anandas and Naran Maharaj say, you have to greedy, beg, borrow, or steal, greed. Intense greed is important. Or not? Hmm. Nandarani, where you are? Hmm. Uh -huh. Something just came, I, can I share this with you? Yeah, yeah, yes. So, uh, you, no, no. Just a question. Yeah. So you were always telling us that some of your god brother <laughs> were doing bhajan for many years in the forest, only chanting Kam Gayatri. But then you were showing us that we can fix ourselves on Radharani in every moment. Like we don't have to be in the forest for that. We can see her and our service and everything we do as a householder in our job, in our service, in our association. So maybe you can share a bit more about this. Actually, one thing Goranga say, if you have a what what is a Asakti, attack. It happens. And this attachment makes you every place like a forest. <laughs> All, everyone is there, but it's not possible. All ups and downs is happening, but it's not touching you. You go out to solve something, then go with it. It's not you involved in that, because your attachment is a different direction. No? Yeah. Because, uh, would have also before, attachment is Wuchi, the taste. And if we really have taste, the higher taste, in this what we are doing, then then you're always in that meditation. Ruchi, I can deviate. 
this time, this suchi, other time, this suchi. Whenever an asakti comes, like you see, his mother has a very much attachment with his baby. She cannot take it out from the mind. She makes the flower, but the mind is thinking sometimes, why? What is my Mohan is doing? <coughs> Not he is sometimes jumping too much. Who is caring to him? It's automatic goal. Working with hand something, but mind is there. Is there because of Ashakti and Similarly, when his attachment comes for my Swamini, as a king, he is power. Do everything which is not disturbing. But this is a really very high thing. And Girhasta Ashram is the most highest ashram. Girhasta Ashram. Sanyas is not like that. But Girhasta Ashram is all some comforts are there. After you are not involved, we are involved one point here. With your Samani is there, you are so lucky you cannot believe that. Could you have another Radhe? Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. I want to say how grateful I am to Garanga for this for this verse and for Rasamai for making it uh, come alive. What it shows, I mean, what it shows is something we see a lot in the Rapa It's this mystery of how Radha is uh, teaching us to love God. She's teaching us how to be a lover. Yes. And how she does it. But, how yeah. she loved to his lover. Yes. Yeah. But the way she does it is so mysterious. Mysterious. <laughs> in a person. See, in a material life, in spiritual life, one way. Yeah. Is a divine. Honey wine. Honey wine. This is a honey wine. After that, no need to drunk. <laughs> You're always drunk. But what I think is that, you know, she's she's glancing back and forth, she's going front up and then coming back and hiding and flirting and seducing. And sometimes I say, why doesn't she jump into his arms, my goodness? <laughs> and I think the reason is that, um, the reason for the appearance of Mahaprabhu is, be, is to show us that, um, experiencing love is greater than love. So Krishna already had love, of course, but Mahaprabhu's job was to find out what it feels like to love. And, and Radha is showing us what it feels like to love through this playfulness. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Gauravani like to share something? Yeah, Gauravani. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is in action. You are in action in tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. If, if you like, we can read a little more. Yeah, please read. No, no, not in the end. This has to step as to me. Yes. If, if you not go in this step, you will never develop your sarupavish. Yeah. 
Shri Das Goswami served Swamini by ornamenting her. You see? Automatic. If this happens, is an automatic global star. This is the sun for Raga. In this verse, he perceives the Kaja Seva, the service of applying eyeliner, praying. When can I worship these eyes that tightly bind the Krishna elephant with even the slightest wink with eyeliner? <clears throat> Within the prayer lies the acquaintance with the moon. Swamini is always victorious over him. Miss Ar Arrow is more strong. <laughs> Without effort. Uh. Namadeva, Pentes, Defeated. Only small wink. Yes. Defeat. Now, your. Her arrow yeah. is more pointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, Kama Gayatri is so vast, uh, Manta. Yeah. Swamini is always victorious over him. Hence, she is known as Jai Shri. Jesse, this is because of that the Jesse. Krishna never wins from her. Before that, you think that Krishna is putting arrow to all the No, 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 no. Radhika's arrow makes him fancy. Today is this. Meditate. Because I have to organize um, Bhagavad Sapta. It is starting from 4th of October. So they are here. I have to talk and make some program organizing. 